Bonjour à tous, aujourd'hui je vous retrouve pour mon premier entretien avec Alex qui vous parle de bipolarité et de dépression. Vous avez tous les sous-titres en français donc n'hésitez pas à les activer. Would you like to speak about like difficult time you went through your life and maybe like now that you are out of that how you would like give advice to people who are facing like I don't know depression or like really hard time you know how to get out of this actually yeah all my life my whole life I've had something or felt something and I, I used to get in trouble in primary school because the teachers didn't think that I wanted to learn except my art teacher was like said to the other teachers even if he doesn't want to do maths or English or whatever look at these paintings that he's d doing and my primary school actually kept all of my artwork I did all these amazing artworks for the school and they kept them and when I was in year six um, my mum I had a meeting with the teachers and they put me on Ritalin, which is like a... I don't actually know what it does, but it's Ritalin. It's like, it's kind of like speed, the drug speed. And it made me go really weird. And that was to do with ADD and ADHD and all that sort of stuff. And when I got to high school, I actually did very well in my, in all my subjects, English. I was really good at English and really good at maths. And I've always just had that had that feeling inside of me that like you know you don't really fit into society like you don't really kind of you, you don't really feel happy in the situation that you're in and that kind of sa stayed through me my whole life um, and then I went through a really bad relationship I was, sorry, I take that back. It wasn't a really bad relationship. It was an extremely good relationship where I learned a lot about myself that maybe I was being really selfish in the relationship. And that brought on a lot of, a lot of like mental stuff. I, I had severe anxiety. Around the time of us break, breaking up, I had severe anxiety and, um, I was so sick going to work, like some days I'd have to even get off the train because I was just so... But um, I think that comes down to a conversation that I was having with a friend recently is in re relationships I felt that I had an attachment to someone, you know, and I really think in life we have all these people that are in our lives and you know some of these people we have codependent relationships with and you know I, I don't know if I still do or I, or I don't but maybe a couple years up until a couple years ago I had a codependent relationship with my mom and my sister and I'd always feel like I needed their approval like if I wanted to do something I needed them to validate me and if I was validated therefore I'd feel better and have more security in the space that I was in but like in the spiritual stuff that I've learned is I'm learning to not have that attachment like human beings intrinsically have attachments to everything the material stuff like even this right now I have an attachment to nicotine it's like I spoke to my father about this is that I need to learn to you, you don't need to desire anything in your heart you were born with everything already inside your heart for you to be happy you know everything is already inside but with life getting so difficult nowadays and technology and all these distractions we're really losing that connection that we have with ourselves and like for people that I, I know that I do suffer from depression, but for people that suffer with depression, everything, everything that you 
need to be happy is already like within you. It's it's there. It's like it's just waiting. It's just you just have to get rid of all the smoke and and realize all the stuff that's going in your life and another thing is people try and control things like you might have something going in in your life and you're trying to control it and the thing is you, you can't really control anything you can't control other people you, know, you can't you just have to accept the biggest thing for me that I've learned, the biggest thing is accepting, accepting the way, accepting the way that things are and trying to become, trying to come to the present moment and just, when you just come to the present moment and be grateful for the present moment and like what's going on in your life and just accepting it and being grateful and even trying to, really trying to be grateful for the things that you're not grateful for like things that are bad, things that are bad in your life, you can look at that and actually just be grateful for that because really something high above, whether it's God or whatever you believe in, is putting that in front of you as a test so that you can learn and take off more layers of yourself and be who you really want to be. Because the person that you really want to be, you know, that happy person, that person that has a good job and that makes... A, a decent amount of money for you to go and do what you want to do and have that relationship all those things are already within you like it's all capable the reason why we're given dreams is so that we can it's like God or whatever saying this is what you can have but we humans are like always wanting something you know like wanting more or not being grateful for what we already have and once we, that's something that I'm learning right now, being on the farm is like, you know, like I don't live, I still live with, technically I still live with my mum and dad, but I don't live with them, but on the farm, it's a big farm, something that I'm learning, learning is just being grateful, and even writing a grateful list every day, and and yeah, depression's a really hard one. Like I've never... When I, when I was in hospital, like I tried to take my own life. But I was not in the right frame of mind. But I tried to electrocute myself. But when I'm, when I'm normal and you look around and things are like not how you want them to be. Like you like, fuck, I don't want to be here why things like this like this is not how I planned and you get mad at like some power above or you you internalize it and you get mad at yourself and you're like fuck I'm stupid or like why did I do this or um, and that can result in these really really bad thoughts and I've, uh, I have had these thoughts and I've had really 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 bad thoughts of all sorts of things but even that, even that is a normal, I think it's quite a normal thing for a human to acknowledge that you, that you can have those thoughts. But um, for anyone who like experiences that stuff, like there is, there is definitely like a higher power or a God or whether it's 10 million ancestors that came before you that are still running in your blood, you know, whatever you believe, there's, there's people that care about you and love you and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, like once you get past the thing about you can't control people and people in your life are, you feel like they're getting you down and you're blaming other people, even blame is another huge one because when you blame someone, you, you're literally giving them the power, you know, you're if, if you say, oh, but he's not paying me enough, you're giving him the power that he's the boss and that he has power over you, but you could say, okay, I'm going to go get another job and get paid more money. As soon as you take the responsibility and say, okay, I'm to blame, I did this wrong, I take responsibility, then that gives you the power to, get to be the bigger person. It's like even if something were to happen in your family and you say, okay, 
yeah, that was me, I did that, and you own up, and you take responsibility, that's giving you responsibility, that's making you responsible, and that's giving you power, and so the reason why I bring up blame is because I know it sounds terrible to hear, but no one's really in, the, the only reason why you're in the position you're in is because of you and the decisions that you made. And the only reason why I spent, you know, over eight months in different hospitals was because of the decisions that I made. You know, I made terrible decisions. And even like doing drugs, like when I turned 18 or even before I was 18, I was doing heaps of amount of drugs you know, smoking crack in Canada and doing all sorts of really, really bad stuff. And I have to take that on board and be like, fuck, well, you know, I'm in the position I am in now because of the decisions that I've made, you know? And that that's power in itself because that gives us the opportunity to say, well, okay, I'm in charge here. I can make myself feel better. I can cut out this from my diet or stop doing this or stop doing this. But that's another thing is because we have these desires, we have these attachments because they make us feel good. They give us dopamine hits and serotonin hits and we're, we're like desiring this stuff. But once you cut all that stuff out and just come back to a place within and it's so difficult like to really resonate with yourself and meditate just within yourself. But that's where the real stuff lies you know not in the external world that that you can see like you know in this this world that you know is delineated through our five senses um, that's just all material mm. so in a way you think like depression could be useful sometimes? As a way to as a way to get to know yourself better. For you could ask sorry? For example. Yeah, like self revelation, like self realizing. Why am I like why do I feel like this? You know? Because you have all the power in yourself to, to change it, you know, to be free. When in that song, when I'm saying to be free, like people chasing love, like chasing that conversation, the other half of it is that no one is free. Like everyone, I'm not saying tree by, free by traveling, I'm saying like freedom of thought. Like imagine if you could just live inside your head and think about whatever you want and just your place inside is just free, you just, you're just happy, you know, that's where, that's where real freedom is. Someone could lock you in a prison, right? But if you had freedom of thought, you could think whatever you wanted to think, you weren't trapped in a cell, but you were, but you weren't just thinking, oh fuck, I'm trapped in a cell, but you could think whatever you wanted to be and be like, you know, someone's coming to see me tomorrow. Or, how beautiful was that time on the beach or what you know you'd think your freedom inside that freedom of thought is like big you know but in terms of depression helping you every single all the biggest people of this world like Gandhi Alexander the Great um Mozart, like um, Genghis Khan, Nelson Mandela, Joan of Arc, all these people had huge amounts of adversity that they went through. Do you think they were just happy people and they just conquered all these wars and they're like, yeah, I'm the fucking best. Like these people, God or whatever, like just has given someone a road and said, Joan of Arc or Gandhi, like you have to get from here to here and you think, oh yes, it's just going to be a straight line, but no, life fucking fucks you up and says you have to go through here, but it's through going through all this shit in your life that makes you realize, fuck, how good is life, like how I've been through so much shit and you can just have one little moment, it could be an hour, 
and that hour is just like the best. It just makes life. Ever, you realize how important like life is, you know. Because life is life is amazing. It can be, but um, you have to not you, but just people like. Thank you.